I now invite the Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Antonio Guterres, to make a statement. The President of the Commission will now make a statement. This is a very special day. Our vision is a cold red for humanity. It's a cold red for humanity. It's a moment of truth. In six days, world leaders will be put to the test at COP26 in Glasgow. Or in actions, with our planet. It's a cold breath for humanity. And the warning signs are hard to miss. Pollution kills 9 million people every day. Kills 9 million people stink. Scorching creating jobs. Turning farmlands into parched landscapes. Cities and entire countries are watching sea levels. Sea levels rise around them. Fossil fuels. And you, is a cold red for humanity. The European Green Deal is our new A human health in years to come. Growth that widespread hunger is a cold red for humanity. Deadly disasters make things different. We want to be the front runners in climate friendly industries. These alarm bells is a cold red for humanity. It's a cold red for humanity.
Angelus Novus. A text by Walter Benjamin. Angelus Novus is looking as though he is about to move away from something. He is fixedly contemplating. His eyes are staring. His mouth is open. His wings are spread. This is how one pictures the angel of history. His face is turned toward the past. Where we perceive a chain of events. He sees one single catastrophe. Which keeps piling wreckage upon wreckage. And hurls it in front of his feet. The angel would like to stay. Awaken the dead. And make whole what has been smashed. But a storm is blowing from paradise. It has got caught in his wings. With such violence. That the angel can no longer close them. The storm irresistibly propels him into the future. To which his back is turned. While the pile of debris before him grows skyward. This storm is what we call progress. A historical document. A 1988 debate on climate change. On ABC News Nightline. With host Ted Koppel. And special guest Dr. Kilaparti Ramakrishna. The industrial age in this country. Our use of fossil fuels. May have caused some of the environmental disasters in other parts of the world. Are there now other parts of the world. That are engaged in the same thing so that we may feel the effect perhaps 20 years down the road. Most certainly. They have begun a process of industrialization which is very much like the process that the industrialized nations have adopted not long ago.
and they have adopted it because they feel that it is the only way to achieve the economic development levels that the industrialized nations have reached now so they are pretty much going to go along those lines and as you said if that were to continue in 20 or 30 years you would see the problem are a lot more aggravated than it already is now well what if the united states the soviet union and japan for example all of these countries which now are perhaps ready to move a step beyond the fossil fuel burning stage were to say to let's say countries like the people's republic of china look you can't do it you can't burn that coal how are they likely to respond oh that would be preposterous that would never be accepted it would never be accepted because you go through your levels of development and then turn around and tell the developing countries that you cannot develop to the same levels as we have what i would suggest is that they should in turn talk about providing for the same kind of economic development but in a different path a path that does not rely upon the burning of fossil fuels that does not rely on the same development techniques that the developed nations have adopted